This is the second tutorial using Record My Desktop, which is about Linux and Pop11 and how Pop11 can invoke the Linux eSpeak utility from inside its editor. But this new demo shows how the text to be generated and given to eSpeak can conform to a grammar. We use a loop construct similar to that demonstrated in the previous recording, which is the one up here. But what goes on in the loop is more interesting. <coughs> As before, the Linux eSpeak program can be invoked from POP11 using the POP11 sysobey command. Sysobey is given a string containing a Linux command, which it asks a Linux, Linux shell to run. And these are some of the formats you can use with eSpeak. We can also give eSpeak the chance to be, we can ask the editor, popular editor VED, which I'm now using, to run eSpeak, which I'm going to do now with this command, eSpeak with a speed of 120, a pitch of 65, and a certain voice, which is one of the ones you can get from the eSpeak minus minus voices command. Uh, which is an English West Midland voice. So let's listen to that. Hello, is Marie already? That was a West Midland eSpeak. Let's try this other one, which is a female voice. So I'll just redo this command. Hello, is Marie already? So you can see that eSpeak is quite versatile. Uh, we can also ask POP11 to run eSpeak, as in this sysobey command, which takes a string and gives it to the Linux shell to run. Hello. Has Mary finished the programming? So that was quite slow with the medium pitch and again the female voice. So we can use that in com that mechanism in combination with POP11's grammar package, which is described in the teach grammar file. I'm first going to use a very simple grammar, which starts there, so I'm marking the line with vars on it, on the left, and then I go down to the end over here, and we're going to have two declarations. First, a declaration of the variable mygram, and then the variable mylex. And mygram is going to be assigned a list which, sorry, which starts up there and ends over here. And the list specifies that a sentence, S, can be a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. We could add extra options for sentences by putting extra list expressions inside this. Uh, these things, starting with three semicolons, are all comments which will be ignored by POP11. We can also tell this grammar system by including in the mygram list um, that a noun phrase can either be a determiner, which we're going to define later, a word like the A, every, each one, followed by a noun, like man, girl, number, or whatever, or it can be a determiner followed by an adjective followed by a noun, like the determiner, adjective, lonely, adjective, computer, noun. So that would be determiner, adjective, noun. It's another form of noun phrase. And a verb phrase is a verb followed by a noun phrase. So a sentence is a noun phrase, which is one of these, followed by a verb phrase, which is only that kind. So we get a noun phrase and a verb phrase make a sentence. We've mentioned here determiner, noun, and adjective, and verb. So these have to be specified with examples in the lexicon. And the variable mylex is going to get the lexicon. So we have the list of nouns, starting with noun, man, girl, number, computer, cup, battle, and so on. We have a list of verbs, hated, stroked, kissed, teased, married, taught, added. A list of adjectives, big, blue, lonely, clever, excellent, angry. A list of determiners, the, a, every, each, one, some. Now this is just a tiny, tiny example of what a grammar is, and it's not meant to be a serious grammar for English or any other language. So if I mark that, li that range, as shown on the left, I can type Control D and POP11 has now compiled that. We can check that it's compiled it by asking it to print out my gram 
using the pretty print arrow, which is 2 equals and a greater than sign. And then I'll type escape D to say do it. And in the window up here, it shows that it's just printed out the grammar in a flattened form because it managed to fit it all in one line. If it hadn't, it would have used a prettier format. And I'll copy that and make the new copy my lex. And we can now print out the lexicon using the same format, escape D. And here it shows you how the lexicon is printed out with each of the uh, lexical categories on a different line. Nouns, verbs, adjectives, determiners. So that's already in POP11. Now we want to do something with that, and for that we use the POP11 grammar library. We can ask that library to use its uh, procedure, generate, with the grammar defined above and the lexicon. So if I I'll just go up there and put a couple of blank lines in the output file. Up here we have the output file and down here the um, command file. So if I say generate using my gram and my legs, it will randomly select uh, something that matches the rules. Well, there's not much choice initially for the sentence bit. It's got to be a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. And for the noun phrase, it's got uh, two choices, either determine a noun, determine an adjective noun. So I'll choose one of those at random, and then it'll choose the adjectives and the nouns at random. Or if it just goes for that one, it'll choose a noun at random. And likewise, a, ver likewise, a verb phrase, it'll choose a verb at random and a noun phrase at random, which is one of those two. OK, so let's ask it to generate something according to those rules. And we get, every computer hated the excellent man, generated at the top. I can do it again, and it just randomly chooses examples. So one clever girl taught the battle. A blue battle stroked each clever room. So you see over here we had taught the battle. The battle didn't have an adjective, whereas in the next example we have each clever room, where we had a noun phrase with an adjective, clever. One thing you could do is try expanding that grammar to include other things, like adverbs, like slowly, fast, cleverly, gracefully, and so on. But I'm not going to bother with that right now. OK, if we want to make POP11 take the output of generate and give it to eSpeak, we're going to have to put it inside a string with double quotes. So we can do that using the string concatenator, which is a greater than, less than symbol. And we start with double quotes. And then we tell it to generate something. And whatever it generates, we then uh, follow with another double quote string. And this concatenator it will create strings out of whatever you give it. So that will create, I'm going to type escape D to run that. So it's generated, as you can see up here, one angry room married some cup. And these two bits have stuck a double quote mark at the beginning of the end. It's left the square brackets in because I've discovered by experimenting that eSpeak doesn't mind the square brackets. Later we will do it without the square brackets. So I can do that again. Generate my gram my legs with the thing to stick the double quote on the right and double quote on the left. And combine that with eSpeak minus S120 in a string. So the whole string will start with eSpeak and will contain the sentence generated and specify speed of 120. And we can give that to sysobey. So I'll put the cursor on that line and type escape D. Some girl kissed the number. That wasn't terribly clear, but we can just do it again. Perhaps change the pitch. rejoin the line, which I broke by accident. OK. So escape D to redo it. One clever car kissed a car. Seems to like choosing kissing as a verb. We'll do it once more. Some excellent garage married every excellent computer. OK, so we can see that it found things to marry other things, and it had um, garage as a word which I didn't hear very clearly, but now I realize it was saying that some excellent garage 
as I would pronounce it, married an excellent computer. Right, so we see it's possible to give sysobey a string made out of a sentence generated by generate with my gram and my legs, and then sysobey will say that string out loud. So now we go from those simple sentences to haikus. And a haiku is a, I'm now moving to the mouse pointer, is a Japanese literary form made of a conspo, consisting of a three-line poem of a highly constrained form. And here are some examples from Margaret Burden's book on creativity, which I strongly recommend. It's published about 1990, I think. Um, he has an haiku, all green in the leaves, I smell dog pools in the trees, crash, moon has fled. And there's no claim that this is a wonderful piece of poetry, it was just one of the examples she gave, I think probably generated by some program. He has another one, eons deep in the ice, I paint all time in a hall, bang, the sludge is cracked. So we can see a common pattern there. Each one has something like all, or something else, and then it's there's an adjective or something like that in there, and then we have something else like leaves or ice. Then we have I, and there's do something paint, and then something like all, and then there's something like time, except that those could be varied. It's like I smell dog pools, I paint all time. I colour all the world in the and then something else or in a and then there's something else which is bang in one case and crash in the other or it could be alas or hello or whatever and then the and then something else a noun phrase has something else so these are of have a sort of simple pattern I'm not saying that real Japanese haikus do but this is the kind of thing we're going to use for this for this example we slightly modify this pattern, as you will see in a minute. So we can now give, I'm not going to enlarge this window, a haiku grammar, which we declare uh, and assign to the variable vars haiku underscore gram. And it starts with a square list, left list bracket, as with the earlier grammar. And the f top level specification says a haiku has some part, which is going to be defined later, and then a new line, which we put in for printing, although it's not part of the haiku, and then it's got another part, and then another new line, and then part three. And um, we are specifying here that there should be a period after each part. That will be because um, it will actually help the eSpeak program give a better pronunciation or better uh, collection of changes of intonation and intensity and so on and pitch. So haiku three parts, part one, part two, part three, and then we're going to have some other little bits that aren't really part of the haiku. And part one has some sort of start word like all or alas or, or some or whatever, then an adjective in and then a noun phrase. So a noun phrase could be the leaves and previously we met simple noun phrases and we'll have some more now. Part two starts with I and then a verb of type one. We're going to have different sorts of verbs, so it could be I smell, and then an adjective like dark, and a noun like pools, in, and then a noun phrase like the trees. So we have the familiar notion of a noun phrase from earlier. Part three can be of two forms. It can either start with an exclamation word like crash or alas or oh or something, then a singular noun phrase has, and then the verb of type two, or the, sa the same type of initial thing, or plural noun verb, have. So we can say John has, or people have, or everybody in the world has, uh, but most people have. Those are quirks of English. Now our, our haiku grammar won't cope with all of those, but I'll just allow simple singular noun phrases, uh, noun phrases or plural noun phrases and then some sort of verb can go so an example of this verb could be f fled or broken or something like that we have singular noun phrases plural noun phrases here and then we had noun phrases in part one and part two 
So we have to define these things. Well, a noun phrase in part one can be either a singular noun phrase or a plural noun phrase. And here we see that a singular noun phrase can have a singular determiner, like the, or each, or a, followed by a singular noun, like mountain or house or whatever. And the plural noun phrase can be something like all, um, and then a plural noun, like houses, all houses. So a house or the house, all houses. And we will have some singular nouns and some plural nouns defined in the lexicon. So, up here we started our grammar, and I'm going to scroll down and go through the lexicon. The lexicon can have adjectives, which are indicated by the word edge, and here is an arbitrary collection of adjectives, abrupt, acrid, crass, flossy, ghostly, purist, rapt, white, zany, zealous. And if you were doing this, you could add your own adjectives, just as you can add your own nouns and other constructs. We can have some words to start part one, all, many, most, so what, and so on, and then determiners, singular ones, there's some, one, each, every, and then plural determiners. Some of the th same words can be singular determiners, like you can have some man, or you can have a plural determiner, some men. We can have one man, but we can't have one men. We can have all men, most men many men and so on and the possessives like my friend my friends her friend your friends and so on so um, this is not terribly systematic but anyway here another s a random semi-random sample of single nouns uh, singular nouns acorn age cosmos moon spring and so on and plural nouns ancestors autumns births collisions in English, most plural nouns, but not all, have an S on the end. I suppose we could put sheep in there, because that's an example of something that doesn't. Some sheep can also be singular. And then we have these two kinds of verbs to go in the different parts of the haiku. Verb type 1 can be abandoned, burned, composed. Verb type 2 can be aged, arisen, bloomed. And that has to be past tense, because it's going to go into a particular kind of construct in the haiku. We can just have another look at that if you want to be reminded. Something strange happening on the left there, but don't worry about it. Um, right, we had verbs of type 1 in I something something or other, I smell, the dog pulls, and verbs of type 2 over here like has fled, has flown, has cl climbed and whatever, and likewise have, so we're going to have past tense. Right, now we've nearly got to the end of our um, lexicon. At the last we have the exclamation words, aha, alas, bang, of course you can add your own, and um, you may want to add things you wouldn't want to use in public. So I've now marked on the left the whole range from the beginning of the haiku grammar um, all the way to, so we start marking there, and we mark all the way down to the end of the haiku le lexicon, which is here. And if I type Control D, it compiles it. So I can check that it's compiled by asking it to print out haiku underscore gram. It's a double print error, and this time the double print error will really spread it out. So it's going to open a window above this window. So there we see haiku gram starts with haiku part one and period, and then there's a new line, which is why this is broken. Part two, period, and then a new line. Part three, period. And then part one can have the start word and so on. So that's the haiku, which is a list of lists, haiku grammar, which is a list of lists of lists, and so on. And we can do the same for the lexicon. So I'll copy that. Um, and edit it to save retyping the whole thing, haiku lex, and that's much longer. I'm not going to go through it. So just in case the grammar library has not been compiled, we compile it by putting the, curse, the editor cursor on the user's grammar line and type escape D. It says done. 
and I do the same with another um, library generate category which is going to allow me to generate haikus instead of just sentences and when the thing generates at random it goes searching down through the, the gram grammatical structures uh, to find things to insert and I'm going to s increase the depth of the search to 20 so I assign the number 20 to max level and now we generate well it says 10 there make it 3 Make it, we generate three haikus by giving this repeat command, repeat three times. Generate category, haiku, haiku, and we give it a haiku grammar and a haiku lexicon. So it's going to look for the word haiku in the haiku grammar and then expand from there. And each time it'll print out what it does. So I've marked from repeat to end repeat, I type control D, and we should get three haikus in the window above. So let's see what we got there. How crass in the echoes. I wipe smelly ocean in the zoo. So four tangles have chimed. And then the second one is all tiny in my seas. I grasp zany bridge in every fold. See the ghosts have held. And the third one was what purest in your tangles. I tear crass ocean in my might. Bang your devils have hated. Well, I don't claim to be a great haiku reader, and I don't claim that those are great haikus, but that shows you that this system can generate simple haikus. So now we want to turn that list of words, including new lines, into a string to give to eSpeak. So how do we do that? Well, we can use generate category in the form that I did earlier here, and instead of printing out what it generates, we'll assign it to the variable output, which we can then use to mangle. So I declare the variable output, I'll type escape D on that line, then come down here to the generate category line with the editor cursor, type escape D. So that's assigned it to output. We've now got the output in that variable, so we can print it out. And it's yet another one of these haikus. Now, because we don't want to print out the, hi the um, haiku, we want to give it to the eSpeak program. I'm going to delete all the new lines from it. And we can see that now it prints it all as with unbroken lines, except that it overflows because the window here is not long enough. We can define a procedure which takes a string, sorry, takes a list, a list of words, and returns a string. So we're going to define a procedure called list to string and it takes as input a word list. I can put spaces there to make that clearer. Pop 11 doesn't mind. So we'll have a local variable to this procedure and we're going to start the output string. This thing up here says that when the procedure finishes whatever the value of the variable string is will be the output of the procedure. So we initiate the variable string with just left quote, uh, double quote to go on the left. <coughs> and we keep adding words to that string that we get from the word list. So we go through the word list and then as long as it's not a new line, which we will ignore, we take the existing string, we put a space in, and we put the word in, and that becomes a new string. So we're gradually constructing the string as we go through the, wo the words in the list. For word in li word list do, as long as it's not a new line, Take the string you had already, add a space, add the word, and then assign that to string. So the string will get longer and longer until we've used up all the words and stuck them on the end of the string. Now we add double quotes on the end, so the string we've got concatenated with a double quote goes to string, and that will be sorry, that will be the result of the procedure. So let's test that on our previous output. We've got the output here. We assign list to string, so we apply list to string to the output and we print out the result. I forgot to compile the procedure list to string so um, I got an error message about uh, compiling uh, executing a non-procedure. So I'll just go and mark this procedure list to string and do a control D and it's now compiled. I can check that it's compiled by asking it to print itself, uh, pop 11 to print out what list to string is printed out and it says up here that it's a pre procedure list to string. 
So we now try again to apply a list string to the output and we get this string which I'm going to isolate. So there's a space, many white in the sheep, period, I dangle, smelly anchor, yay, comment, and so on. And, and it actually carries on as one string, but it's broken in the output file. Your daylight has drowned. So <coughs> that is now a string in the right format to give to eSpeak, and it hasn't got any of those square brackets. So we can give it to eSpeak uh, by repeating that operation list to string applied to output. And although we could have just used the um, string, and concatenate that with this thing, which is a command to eSpeak to use a certain speed and a female voice, and then to hand we ask sysobey, which is pop11 command, to take that string and give it to Unix, to Linux rather, and Linux will give it to eSpeak, or we'll run eSpeak with that string. So we can try. Many white in their sheep. I handle smelly anchor in the anguish. Yay, your daylight has drowned. Well, you may or may not like that voice, but uh, that's just one of many that eSpeak can do. So now let's define a procedure which is going to generate, print out, and then speak out a number of haikus using the grammar that we had above, the lexicon we had above, and we specify how many haikus, oh, the number of haikus I left out the B, desired. So we define this procedure called make haikus, and it's going to take three inputs, the grammar, as we had before, the lexicon, and the number of haikus to be printed out and spoken. And this one doesn't actually return any results, it just does things, the side effects. It's going to have two local variables, output and string. And the output will be the list that comes from the generate category procedure, and then the string will be the one we create from that by using the list to string procedure as before. So. We have another repeat command, except this is quite a long one. It says repeat some number of times, and that number will be specified when we run the procedure, make haikus, repeat that, uh, repeat that number of times, and I'll do various things. I'm going to expand the window now so we can see the whole procedure. Repeat number of times, do various things. There's the end repeat, and what it does in each time round is generate a haiku using the category haiku, grammar and lexicon, whatever grammar and lexicon you give it, so it won't necessarily use the haiku gram or, or my gram or anything like that, just do whatever you give it. The sentence generated, which will be a list of words, will be assigned to this variable output, then it'll print it out, and to give us time to, to, to read it and also to synchronize the printing and the speaking, it will pause and wait for me to press the return key, which by running this read line command, read line, uh, waits until you type in a list of words. Well, I'll type in an empty list and it'll be discarded, so it won't be assigned to anything. That's why there, there's nothing to the right of the right arrow except the semicolon. Then we take that output, convert it to a string. It's a list. We apply list to string to the output and get a string. Assignment goes from left to right. And then we s get sysobey to speak that string having previously printed out, and we give it a speed of 120, we make it emphasize capitals, which is what that K does, and we give it that uh, female F2 voice, and it then has the string at the end of this, appended to this string, to be given to eSpeak. Right, and we could have a pause, but I'm not going to bother now. So, I'm going to define this compile this define haikus procedure. The shortest way is escape C while the cursor is in there. It says done at the top. I can check that it's compiled. Make haikus. Print out whatever that is. And it will show me in the output window that there is a procedure. Make haikus. So let's do it with just one as a test case. So we wanted to make one haiku. I'm going to clear. I'm going to clear the output window. Yeah. Okay. And um, so I'll ask you to do one haiku. It'll create one. It'll pour, print it out. It'll pause, and I will then press return when ready. Escape D. 
So it printed out this thing over here. I won't read it out. I'll let eSpeak read it out. So I now hit the return key. Not ghoulish in our glass. I stroke ghostly verses in your daylight. Forever the hatching has bloomed. Okay. Well, now we let it come and do three. Sorry, if I, no, I think I'll reduce it to three. It'll take too long otherwise. Let's do three more. And I have no idea what's going to come out because, as before, it will choose at random from amongst the many possible ways of generating haikus. So we start that off. And you can see up here what it has produced. So I will hit the return key. How tinkling in all sheep. I catch smelling anguish in some cosmos. So, four autumns have raged. Another one. I uh, now press return. Cool dark in each moon. I grasp purest winters in some cosmos. Yes, some hosts have faded. And another. Press return. Most flossy in my canopy. I expect deep death in many vessels. Ouch, my ocean has swirled. Well, that's enough for now. There's a lot more in the POP11 system and lots and lots of tutorial files and so on. The background to these uh, demonstrations includes the Teach Grammar file, which uh, introduces you to the basic grammar program, which can be used to generate in the way you've seen, but can also be used to analyze sentences. And then Teach Story Grammar extends that to show how you can produce haikus and also rather stupid stories generated from a grammar. And that's the end of this particular demonstration.